To touch this turf. Let me throw it to you. To play this game. For Dylan Lancaster, it doesn't get any better than this. My bad. I always wanted to play football. My dad put me in pads when I was five years old. He grew into those pads as a running back for Lexington Christian Academy. He was good and being looked at by several college football programs. My dad and my both of my grandfathers, they wanted me to be a football player my whole life. That's, that's what they wanted for me. And that's what he wanted until it was over. In the back of my head is where all four of my concussions have been. Between 100 and 120 Gs is where we see most of the concussions. Virginia Tech professor Dr. Stefan Duma is an expert at acceleration. It's, it's not rocket science. You know, the better helmets have more padding and they reduce the head acceleration. All right, you're going to give me a big gap blitz right here, okay? You're going to stand back. Here we go. We thought the best way to tell you is to show you. Show 44, show, show. Hey, 42, 42, 69 Mike, 69 Mike. This is what a hit feels like. <laughs> Whistle. Good. Good. These McGoffin County boys just clinched their first district championship ever. <laughs> Inside their helmet. DNA Pro Plus. Awesome. Right there in the Dad, back. Dr. Duma believes the key to their safety is written. That's going to be about a 30 G impact. The reason we test it is because that's the majority of the impacts they're going to see. Duma and his team came up with the first rating system for football helmets. Before him, there was just a pass-fail system for an adult helmet to be deemed safe for your child. One of the main things we were trying to tell people is that the difference between the bad and the good helmets is dramatic. They all pass Noxy, but do you want the one that just barely passes or do you want the one that passes by a lot? So Dr. Duma developed a star system. Five stars goes to the helmet best capable of taking a hit. Four stars gets a very good rating. Three stars good. Two stars adequate. One star marginal and not recommended. So not recommended, one star, two star. These are the ones we want people to get out of. Our investigation into helmet safety uncovered five high schools in our viewing area with helmets below three stars. Rowan County has six two-star helmets and two one-star. Three schools, Dunbar, Tates Creek, and Bryan Station all have some one- and two-star helmets. Scott County had the worst percentage of what Dr. Duma would consider helmets that need to be replaced. Out of 145 helmets the district uses, 81 get a two-star rating. We made numerous attempts to interview Scott County officials about their helmet selection. The athletics director and head football coach even told us he'd sit down and talk to us about it. Then told us questions need to go through the superintendent's office. We made multiple calls to the superintendent. She then released a statement basically saying student safety is their highest priority and they strive to stay abreast of new research to ensure that safety. They also said they are currently reviewing the Virginia Tech star ratings and will use the findings when purchasing new helmets. I mean, would you go so far to say, you know, there's really no reason at this point that anyone should be in anything less than a five star? I would, what I would say is if you're buying helmets, you shouldn't buy anything less than a five star. Districts across the state are strapped for cash. Helmets are expensive, ranging from around $150 per helmet to around $375. The price of some of the, the best helmets was actually lower than some of the lower rated helmets. That was one of the dramatic things was that not only is there a big difference in performance, but there's a big difference in cost and it's not related. So some of our most expensive helmets, $200 was the worst helmet. We had other helmets for 160 that were four-star helmets. Virginia Tech's star system is the first of its kind and has only been available since 2011. I and mean, you can just see relative to the other one how it's But in its three smaller. years, the number of five-star helmets went from one to nine. <laughs> Proof that education about helmet safety and concussions is catching on quickly. Head-to-head -head contact in 2014 is now considered an undisciplined play. When I played, it was considered a good football play. But late in the first quarter, the Wildcats drove... Former University of Kentucky quarterback Freddie Maggard knows he took some hits in those days. Many times in those days, it was get knock the cobwebs out, you know, rub dirt on it, get back out there. 
uh, from the coaches and player and everybody because it, this is the way it was. Kentucky took the ball. To Maggard says the game has come a long way since his day. Coaches and trainers are more educated and aware of the signs of a head trauma. I didn't tell my doctor and now I'm never allowed to play again. Lancaster admits he ignored signs. Come on, dudes. But the college that wanted him for his running back abilities, Center College, also wanted him for his character. As soon as I told Coach Fry that I wasn't allowed to play, he said, well, do you want to be a student coach? Now he's a leader in a game he loves and a model for younger generations to listen to your head and protect it. Uh, now I have to make an extension. Lately, Brian Hornfelt has spent every night and weekend making bracelets. There have been a lot of kids in my school who would bring in their looms and just make bracelets and they would sell them to other kids. He's a 10 year old devoted to craftsmanship. That's why I don't like switching books. I have to go in and get these two bands and then pull it up onto there. Driven to fill his pocket with profits that he gives to Mr. B. After I found out that Mr. B had cancer, I thought, well, I could probably use this to don't get him money. Mr. Darren Brunkhart teaches Brian and about 500 other students at Garth Elementary. Last month, he found out he had testicular cancer, and Monday, he'll begin chemotherapy. He never asked why me, only when could he see his students again. I was always the first question I asked was when I could get back to work. For Mr. B, that'll be next school year. To fill the time and help with expenses, Brian started a Facebook page selling bracelets for Mr. B. He's raised more than $300. I have friends and family that have banded together to help me, but I never thought that the students in my school would be a big contributor in a group of helping me get through this time. We talked with Mr. B tonight and he had a message for you that we recorded. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, so <laughs> we'll show you who wanted to, to talk with you. But do you want me to play it? Hey Brian, it's Mr. B. Uh, I heard about what you're doing for me, making these bracelets to help me uh, raise money to pay for my treatments. And words can't even express how I feel. And uh, it's such a good feeling to know that I meant that much to you in your life and your time at Garth that you would uh, help me extend mine and get the treatments that I need. And uh, I can't wait to get back to Garth to see you and your brothers and uh, get back to work, uh, eat healthy, exercise every day. I'll see you soon. Yeah, he just wanted to say thanks for doing that because he said he didn't get a chance to see you. Yeah. Is it nice to know that he's... Yeah. He seems like a really cool guy. Yeah. <laughs> are you emotional? <laughs> huh? I said, are you kind of emotional right now? No. No, you're cool? Okay. I couldn't believe that young children are doing this for someone. Like, here I was, I think I'm the person that's impacting these kids' lives and come to find out they're the ones that are going to be helping me out at my time of need. He's a very nice man. He does a lot for students and teachers. He's always willing to help. So is his student in Scott County, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT.